Nirvana is the highest bliss, a supramundane state of eternal happiness. The happiness of Nirvana cannot be experienced by indulging the senses but by calming them. Nirvana is the final goal of Buddhism. What is Nirvana? Then it is not easy to know what Nirvana really is. It is easier to know what Nirvana is not. Nirvana is not nothingness or extinction. Would the Buddha have left his family and kingdom and preached for 45 years all for nothingness? Nirvana is not a paradise. Several centuries after the Buddha, some of the Buddhist sects began to describe Nirvana as a paradise. Their purpose of equating Nirvana with a heavenly world was to convince the less intellectually gifted and to attract them to the teachings of the sect. Striving for Nirvana came to mean looking for a nice place where everything is beautiful and where everyone is eternally happy. This might be a very comfortable folktale, but it is not the Nirvana that the Buddha experienced and described. During his time the Buddha did not deny the idea of paradise or heaven as it was presented in the early Indian religions. But the Buddha knew that this paradise was within samsara and the final liberation was beyond it. The Buddha could see that the path to nirvana led beyond the heavens. If nirvana is not a place, where is nirvana? Then, strictly speaking, we cannot ask where nirvana is. Nirvana exists just as fire exists. There is no storage place for fire or for nirvana. But when you rub pieces of wood together, then the friction and heat are the proper conditions for fire to arise. Likewise, when the nature of a person's mind is such that he or she is free from all defilements, then nirvanic bliss will arise. Anyone can experience nirvana, but until one experiences their supreme state of nirvanic bliss, one can only speculate as to what it really is. Although we can get glimpses of it in everyday life, for those who insist on the theory, the texts offer some help. The texts suggest that nirvana is a supramundane state of unalloyed happiness by itself. Nirvana is quite unexplainable and quite undefinable as darkness can be explained only by its opposite, light, and as calm can only be explained by its opposite, motion. So likewise Nirvana as a state equated to the extinction of all suffering can be explained by its opposite. The suffering that is being endured in samsara as darkness prevails wherever there is no light, as calm prevails wherever there is no motion. So likewise nirvana is everywhere where and change and impurity do not prevail. A sufferer who scratches his sores can experience a temporary relief, but this temporary relief will only aggravate the wounds and cause the disease to worsen. The joy of the final cure can hardly be compared to the fleeting relief obtained from the scratching. Likewise, satisfying the craving for sense desires brings only temporary gratification or happiness which prolongs the journey in samsara. The cure for the samsaric disease is nirvana. Nirvana is an end of the cravings which cause all the sufferings of birth, old age, disease, death, grief, lamentation, and despair. The joy of nirvanic cure can hardly be compared to the temporary samsaric pleasure gained through fulfilling the sense desires. It is not advisable to speculate on what nirvana is. It is better to know how to prepare the conditions necessary for nirvana, 
How to attain the inner peace and clarity of vision that leads to nirvana. Follow the Buddha Kama's advice. Put his teachings into practice. Get rid of all defilements which are rooted in greed, hatred, and delusion. Purify yourself of all desires and realize absolute selflessness. Lead a life of right moral conduct and constantly practice meditation by active exertion free yourself from all selfishness and illusion then nirvana is gained and experienced namo buddhaya